Hi, everyone. Welcome. Um, I see that a couple of you have already started doing this, but uh, please feel free to input where you're listening uh, to us from today in the chat function. Let's see. We have listening from Nigeria, North Carolina, um, Mumbai, Mississippi, Germany, Kazakhstan, India, Peru. Welcome everyone. It's great to see people from all around the world here. Kenya, Greece, New York, Nairobi, amazing. So, so great. All right, well, welcome to uh, Holtz Boston Campus Virtual Open House. Um, during this session today, we will be offering a one hour interactive uh, event and you'll have the chance to hear from Holtz Boston Campus Dean, Dean Gonzalo, um, the head of student services, uh, head of career, I'm sorry, career services team, student services team, uh, one of Holtz associate directors of enrollment will be available as well. Um, and we'll also actually have a current Holtz student that will be available to answer any questions that you have. Um, the event will last roughly one hour and will allow time for Q&A at the end of the session. So, please feel free to utilize either the chat function um, or the Q&A box just at the bottom of your Zoom screen there uh, to input any questions. And of course, we'll address as many of those as possible. Um, now, before I hand this over to Dean Gonzalo, I would love to show you a quick video of our Boston campus. Boston is just the mecca of education in the world. Boston has always been known as a student town, the kind of academic environment I really want to be in. So this is the most international school I've ever, ever seen. The other day I walked into the elevator, there's Spanish and then there's Italian and then there's French being spoken and then there's also Mandarin and then there's me. <laughs> so you walk in and you're thinking to yourself, this is the world and this is the way that it should be. I love everything about Boston. <laughs> I mean, I'm a Red Sox fan, so I go to every single game that I'm, I'm possible to go. This kind of sports culture here in Boston is just so rich. It's a vibrant city and the history that's here, the location of the actual campus itself is right by the Charles. So the view is absolutely gorgeous. There's music and definitely a wonderful nightlife. And you would be very hard pressed to find something that you wouldn't enjoy in the city. There are different types of working professionals in Boston that Holt has relationships with. They bring in and we can ask them questions about potential internships and potential jobs and also just having a, a tour of their headquarters. The professors that came, oh my god, they had this depth of subject matter. The content was something I had not been exposed to previously in my education. You meet with a caring career advisor who puts you directly on track with your resume and with your LinkedIn profile. I can tell that in these past two months with my teammates, I improved my professional skills much better than like five years working before in my home country. What I imagined really is a perfect fit. It's what I wanted to see when I got here. And I thought, if this is what I'm gonna get from one year, oh, my life has changed. Um, great. Um, so now I'm actually going to hand this over to Dean Gonzalo Chavez. Um, Gonzalo, if you can please just tell us a little bit about you, um, you know, your history with HALT, but then also about the Boston campus and why you think HALT stands out as a business school. Thank you, Brooke. I'm so delighted to be with you. I, I, when I see the video, I, I think there's, I can't see it enough times, right? It's in a, it's in a wonderful place. Uh, I, I joined Holt in 2013, um, and, and to me, it was very clear from the start. Uh, I, I decided that I fell in love with Holt immediately. Uh, I decided that this is the place where I'm going to, you know, invest the rest of my professional career. Why? Because I felt that, ah, this is a place where they really care about the student experience, the good teaching, which was something that I uh, deeply, you know, care about. Uh, and so I started uh, about eight years ago as a professor of finance. And in 2018, uh, I joined as the dean for the Boston campus. Uh, 
I still teach. I teach uh, one or two uh, courses a year just to make sure that I'm, you know, continuously in contact with that that the place where the magic happens, right? Which is, you know, the classroom. So I definitely have a, a very, you know, my, my background as a, as a professor for many years indeed does inform my view about the things that, uh, that are important to us. One of those very important things is to make sure that there's a meaningful and impactful, you know, student experience. Now, of course, this opportunity allows me to talk about the Boston campus, which is, which is fantastic uh, for me. Uh, one of the things I, I really like is that we have a campus feel. Uh, we have a undergraduate building, a uh, whole point, a uh, postgraduate building, a uh, whole center. And then we have a residential building, which is whole house. And they're all, you know, walking distance, two minutes, maybe three of you are leisurely uh, from, from, from each other. So you have this feel uh, of, a, of a campus environment. Uh, we are very dynamic. A uh, very busy uh, campus uh, of the approximately 18 different types of programs that we offer at Hull. Uh, Boston offers, you know, 12 of them. So well, very busy, very dynamic, as I said. Uh, on the year in which we're all, you know, here, of course, um, we host approximately easily 100 different nationalities, which is an incredible level of uh, diversity. Um, we, in addition to being in a very I would say nice neighborhood. Uh, we are in a nice, very nice, larger neighborhood. We're in Boston, right? Which is, uh, you saw to a certain extent, you probably know this already. You saw that in a bit of the video, but you know, Boston is a place where academia is, of course, you know, very important. Uh, there are approximately 40 different higher education institutions in, in Boston alone. But if you think about the New England area, the area of six different states that are very close to one another that include, of course, Massachusetts and Boston, then you're talking about 250 different higher education institutions with a population of, uh, last time I checked, about a million uh, students, right? So it's a wonderful, I would argue, uh, uh, you know, neighborhood to be in. I do would like to um, address your, your question, Brooke, on you know, what makes Holt special. Uh, and I think um, for me, it's the answer is part of what, what makes us, you know, the, the academic experience in our campus and the academic experience at Holt, because our campus is really a reflection of what you see at Holt. So I think the, the, first, the first thing that comes to mind is that we have different faculty from different backgrounds, but there, two, there are two things that are common to our, to our faculty and therefore to our academic experience. Uh, the first thing is that, you know, we have good teaching. Uh, we, uh, we make sure that, and I referred to this back when I, I share why I fell in love with Holt as a professor. We really care about the student experience. We really care about, about good teaching. Uh, the second part of that is that we, we place quite a bit of emphasis on, yes, teaching very well, but also making sure that that teaching conveys, provides practical, applied knowledge. It doesn't mean that we, that there's no rigor to that knowledge, there is, but it's emphasized in a way that it's applicable. That it's, it's a way that answers the question, how does this make me, help me provide, be able to, to implement, you know, good uh, business decisions. I think the other aspect, when I talked about diversity, the other aspect is that we can't, we are constantly replicating global conditions, the real world in which now we're all, we're all in, right? It, which is a, a global exposure. You're constantly being, um, being uh, made to work with, with colleagues and classmates from different countries. We on purposely make sure that uh, your teams are constantly changed so that you are always adapting to new points of view from people that are you know, from, from cultures or countries that are different than yours. Uh, we, we try to the extent possible to make sure that you're not in, say, a group that has a person from the same country where you're in, right? So um, the, the classroom experience, the whole emphasis on, um, on making sure that you're exposed to what the world looks like. And I would say the, the last component uh, that I think is extremely important is that we are not concentrating on the professional development, which is of course critical and very important, but there's also a personal development uh, inserted in our 
uh, course design in our program design. So it's not just, oh, yes, we're providing those skills, we're providing that knowledge. It's also we're providing the opportunity for you to grow as a person. So um, that's the thing, that's the way I would, I would, I guess, summarize what makes, what excites me about the things we do, right? And not only here in Boston, but also at Holt. In the end, we're in the business of changing people's lives, your lives. So uh, it's an exciting thing to do. Thank you. Fantastic. Thank you so, so much, uh, Dean Chavez. That was great. Um, all right. Now, I would love to hand this over to Nav Judah, who's with our career services team. Um, Nav, I know that you have a couple of slides to share, so I will uh, allow you to share those now. Absolutely. Thank you, Brooke. Thank you. I mean, thank everyone for, uh, for joining today. I just wanted to share with you a little bit about what uh, the career development team at, at HALT does. On this slide, you see the beautiful faces of our team spread across the entire globe. So whether you start in Boston, San Francisco, London, Dubai, or if you decide to rotate to, um, to one of our uh, rotation centers, you are going to um, be advised or consult with, uh, with one of these uh, professionals. So what do we do with, uh, with students and careers? I mean, the first and foremost, the thing that differs, um, when you think about this team that's on the screen, what makes them different from typical career development teams is these individuals are highly skilled in working with international students. That's all they do, right? So um, as you're well aware, HALT is a very, very international school. Uh, you know, your traditional school in the United States might have upwards of, you know, 15 to 20% maximum international uh, student populations. And, and we kind of flip that uh, upside down. And so this group is uh, specialized in helping international job seekers um, create transitions for themselves, trans transitions to a new geography, to work, a uh, new industry or a new function or a combination of, of those three. Um, how do they do that? You know, you know, we did this on a weekend with some executive MBA students, but you know, first we do some self-reflective uh, exercises. We help you discover your strengths, your interests, your motivators. And then we start to um, help you to develop a strategy around how do those uh, interests and strengths align to the world of work? Uh, they help you with all the tactical elements of a job search, you know, so creating your LinkedIn and your resume and um, ensuring that uh, you've got great digital presence, which is uh, you know, highly relevant today when most of our students and, and most job seekers are applying um, you know, online uh, for, for, for work or interviewing online. Uh, we do a lot of interview coaching, which we're actually starting with students next week. And of course, we, um, you know, we share best practice around job search tactics. Uh, we don't do this alone. So we, um, you'll see a, an award here on the bottom of the screen. Um, this award was given to us by the Association of MBAs. So there is a, a group called Association of MBAs that, um, and I'm just going to put in the chat the, the link to this article. Uh, that hands out awards every year to business schools and um, MBA schools. Uh, for a variety of different um, reasons and metrics. And we won the award for career strategy. So we won the 2020 career strategy award. Uh, if you read through this article, the reason why we won this is we leverage the strength of our alums to help um, develop and shape the futures of our students, right? And so many of the events that we hold, many of the em employer partners, the internships, the jobs come through uh, our alumni network. And so one thing I want you to take away from this is how strong the alumni network is and how supportive they are of, of current students. And I just want to remind you that, you know, once you're done um, your course of study here at HALT, uh, you should do the same, right? And so you should support future, uh, future students. Um, just to give you a highlight of, of kind of what we've, uh, we've done uh, since September, our team has uh, facilitated 1,100 uh, appointments in person with students and 490 uh, via, um, via Zoom and online. And so what I want you to take away from this is whether you're studying in person or online with us, we've, we've got uh, a career advisor that is, uh, has got their doors open for you. And then some highlights for, for this week, because we have a couple amazing events, because one of the things that we do in careers is we also host uh, networking events and recruitment events. And this week, we've got two uh, career events to, um, you know, to share with our students. Um, they're actually happening tomorrow, both of them. Like one is facilitated by two recruiters at Google, and this is around owning your identity and navigating the job search. So uh, in order to keep uh, our students uh, abreast of kind of things that are relevant um, and, and, and uh, kind of impacting the world today, we decided to co-create um, a workshop around how do you navigate bias in, in the recruitment process? So I said, you know, we're a highly international school, and as you most doubt uh, have heard over the, the last year, there's been a lot of uh, um, 
uh, issues that have been affecting, um, you know, race relations and things of that nature. Uh, with that, you know, ultimately we've had a lot of students um, concerned about, you know, what does this mean for my my job search? How do I how do I navigate uh, kind of racism or or bias? And so um, the wonderful folks at, at Google, specifically from their uh, diversity and inclusion team, are going to uh, um, host a, a wonderful workshop with our students to to uh, to, to navigate uh, bias and learn how to uh, to overcome it. And then secondly, we've got uh, the vice president of business development from Capital One tomorrow who's uh, going to be joining us for a, a fireside chat. So just a sample of the type of events that we um, that we host throughout the year for uh, for our students. Um, important to note, Google has one of our alums. So that's an example of uh, you know, an alum coming back at, uh, and supporting current students. And I'll, I'll leave it at that. Uh, have a read of that article I put in the chat. And um, you know, we, we look forward to, to seeing you soon. Great, thank you so much, Nav. Um, I'd now like to hand this over to Morgan with our student services team. Um, I will let you go ahead and share your slides. Awesome, thank you so much, Brooke. Um, and thank you all for being here today. Uh, my name is Morgan McClure. I work with the student services and events team. And what we do is essentially you have your academics in class, you have your careers who will help you get a job. And what we focus on is really your experience at HALT outside of the classroom. So we work online and in person with clubs and organizations, the HALT Student Association, which is our student government. We do cultural celebration planning, networking groups, peer support groups, and so much more. Really anything you can dream up, we'd love to work with you. Um, we do a lot of uh, interactions with students and, and bringing their ideas to campus. So a lot of what we do is also directed by students. Just to go in and highlight a couple of things we work on. First, I wanna chat with you about clubs. So we sort of silo our clubs into three different uh, categories. So first I wanna highlight our professional clubs. These are two clubs that we have on campus here this year that have been doing some really excellent work with virtual events. The Women Plus in Business and the BCA, Business and Current Affairs Think Tank. They both have really taken a lot of initiative bringing in outside speakers, hosting Zoom events, as well as uh, just bringing some really awesome communities to campus. There are a lot of awesome professional clubs, and these are a great way to sort of add stuff to your resume as well, and sort of be, have an opportunity to network with like-minded people and become um, just a little bit more involved in campus life. Now, of course, not everything is about business. Um, we do have some sports clubs. And, and so right here, again, is a picture of one of our really active clubs that have been able to work with some of our COVID restrictions. Um, and this is the soccer or football club. Um, this right here is actually on campus. This is a soccer field that we have right next to Holt House. And they hold uh, two to three games a week. So if you're feeling stressed out, just wanna you know, get some energy out, Soccer club's great, uh, great opportunity for that. In addition to that, we have our social clubs. So two here that I really wanna highlight are Halt in Action, which is our um, volunteering club. They do a lot of work with um, local food banks, um, giving donations. They've had some really excellent fundraisers and have been such a joy to work with in terms of getting out and giving back to the community that they're living in. In addition, we have our In Focus group, this one is actually our photography club. And they have been really active planning photo walks, some trips. Uh, they have one upcoming event where they're actually going to a local zoo to take some wildlife photography. So again, a really great way to get to know like-minded people around sort of a social identity. Uh, because there's always a lot of questions about that, I just wanna put a quick list of all of the clubs we have on our Boston campus. Uh, some of these are across campuses, so you can be part of them in London, and San Francisco and Dubai as well. Uh, some of them are Boston specific. That being said, if you see something on here that you're interested in, great, we'd love to work with you. If you don't see something that you're interested in and you're saying, oh man, like I really wish there was a volleyball club, come to us, we'll work with you. It's super easy to get started and it's a pretty quick process. So um, we love to see all the ideas you have and all the things you bring to campus. In addition to that, we have our Holt Student Association. Uh, this photo right here is actually the current Holt Student Association and they are an elected body. 
So what they do is they work as a representative of your cohort or of your, um, your classmates. And what they do, they work closely with student services, with academics, with operations. It's a really awesome way to get to know the HALT uh, staff and to really feel like you've made a mark. They have been really instrumental this year in uh, giving us feedback on COVID protocols, making sure that the building is being operated in a way that's COVID friendly and um, we're keeping everyone safe. Um, they also are responsible for some social events. So gatherings, mixers, networking, things like that. So if you're interested um, in getting involved in student life, but you don't really want to start a club, HSA is the way to go. And then finally, I wanted to highlight some of my favorite things that we get to do on campus. And these are our Go Global events. All of these photos are from the past fall. So we had Diwali, Dia de los Muertos, we have pumpkin carving. This spring, we've already had a Lunar New Year celebration. We've had a carnival celebration. I did see some of you from Kazakhstan and Iran in there. We're actually having Nauru's next Monday. We're really excited. It's our very first time hosting it. So um, take a look on our Instagram and you'll be able to see some photos of our, our Hafsin table. Um, a lot of these also, again, are student directed. Um, what happened was uh, during our Lunar New Year celebration, an Iranian student came to us and said, hey, we have a celebration of New Year as well. Can we do this? And we said, yes. Um, so again, a lot of this is student directed. We know that you're missing home, especially during these special moments throughout the year. So come to us, we wanna make it happen for you. And thank you so much. I'm gonna hand this off to Soledad. Thank you so much. And you know what, I know that we are opening this up to a live Q and A at the end of the session, but I do have three specific clubs questions. So if you don't mind, I'll go ahead and ask you that and then we'll go uh, speak with Soledad. Um, okay, so first question is, how has the attendance been to the clubs and events during COVID times? Any fluctuations? Um, if yes, how are you counter potential setbacks the communities are experiencing over, over the last year and this upcoming year? So what does the attendance look like? Yeah, we've had really good attendance for, for a lot of events. Okay. Um, of course, it all depends on how well you advertise. We can work with you to put up promotional materials, send it out in newsletters, but we, um, we've seen some really good turnouts for um, Liberum has, uh, they do book and wine clubs, so they'll order books and then everyone reads it and they have a Zoom discussion and they've had some really good turnouts. Like I mentioned, the BCA Think Tank, the Women Plus in Business, they've had really good turnouts. Um, the Crux was our climbing team. They had their first event two weeks ago um, and they had to put a limit on it, obviously for social distancing and they sold out of their spaces in a matter of days. Oh, um, so I think students, health students are very adaptable and I think I've been really proud of seeing how quickly they've been able to adapt and how open to the adaptations that the student body has been. That's great, love to hear that. Um, the next question is, on peer support groups, my work with the collegiate recovery community has been very important to me. Is there a CRC on Holt's campuses? So we don't have a CRC on Holt campus right now. Like I said, it's super easy to start a club. Um, we just ask you that you are a club or a peer support group. Um, we just ask that you fill out a form. Clubs versus peer support groups. Um, clubs, we do ask that you hold public events that you um, have a couple of them throughout the semester. Peer support groups are really about what you need. So there's no requirement on that. So if you do want to start a peer support group, it is really easy. Um, you just need to let us know what you, the mission of the club or the support group is. Fantastic. Okay, I have two more quick questions for you here. Um, Lucia would like to know, are there any clubs that tap into the mental health campus? I think that you already, you know, briefly discuss this, um, professional life, et cetera. Yeah, so we do have a peer support group on mental health. Actually, it was one of the first ones that was started. Um, and it actually was started by an MBA student um, named Shabin on our campus this semester, really lovely student. And yes, they've had a few like de-stress events around finals. Um, and again, just a safe space to talk about mental health. I do wanna say we also have have on-site mental health counseling. Mm -hmm. um, so that is something that Holt does offer. So if you do 
need to talk to a counselor, we have them on campus as well. It can be really hard. MBA is not an easy undertaking. We totally understand that. And we want you to take care of yourself. So, um, you know, if you need any sort of help like that, we have resources. That's great. Thank you. Um, okay, I see that we do have a ton of questions go coming in. Um, I'll ask this one more, we'll move on, and then we will go back to the questions at the end of the session. Um, Carlos would like to know if as a master's student, he can be part of the soccer club that's open to, to all programs, correct? Absolutely, yeah, it's open to all programs. Um, sorry, I also saw someone asking, is it possible to participate in more than one club? Absolutely. We do have students who uh, not only participate, but are also uh, board members of several clubs. Fantastic. Okay, thank you. Um, Everyone, these are great are great questions rather. Keep keep them coming and we will address these at the end of the session. Um, but I would like to introduce Soledad, who's actually a dual degree current student. Um, great to see you, Soledad. If you don't mind just introducing yourself, um, maybe telling us a little bit about your experience with the program and then also why you chose HALTS. Hi, thank you, Brooke. And hi, everyone. Thanks for joining us. So my name is Soledad Ibanez. I'm originally from Chile in South America. And I came to Boston in 2019 already to pursue the dual degree. So that was the most important thing that motivates me. I wanted to do the MBA and the Master in Business Analytics. My background is in marketing, so I wanted to mix both of the the careers and to uh, put a level up <laughs> to my, my experience. And that was like the main reason before coming. Uh, now the main reason to stay and to keep uh, learning and to keep coming to the school is like everyone said before, this is a school that is really diverse. Mm -hmm. uh, the, the amount of cultures and different people that you will meet is so rich that that is like very unique and is very special. Uh, also, one of the things that really surprised me is how the school handled all the COVID situation. Uh, I was one of the students who have lived all the year of COVID. Uh, we that hit us on the middle of the um, on the um, on the MBA program, and we start the master with this situation, but the school was able to move very quickly to a hybrid system. So we we were not so much time at home like other schools. And you can see me now with the mask and all the protocols, because actually there is a lot of people now in classes in person. There's a lot of people as well uh, online, but the system goes and, and we can still be like participating and have this environment that is really rich to learn and to gain more skills. That is mostly what I really love about here. So yeah, overall, that is my experience. I don't know if there's anything else you want to know, Brooke, or that's great. You know, I'd really like to encourage everyone uh, in the audience here to please input your questions for Soledad. She's a great resource being, you know, a current student. Um, okay, Sebastian actually has a question for you here. Have you experienced any setbacks with the hybrid classroom setup? Uh, just wanted to clarify what you mean exactly with setback. Um, Sebastian, do you mind just clarifying? Um, while we're waiting, uh, Diego would like to know, from your perspective, how high are the chances of getting a job after the MBA? And what can you recommend to us to facilitate this process? This may be more of a question for NAV, but it sounds like they're looking for your perspective. <laughs> okay, so going back to Sebastian first, um, the school has a, a, a new system that teachers are um, teaching with a learning supporting assistant at the same time. So they have extra people helping them to run the class in a way that they can, teachers can focus on the students and on their learning. And there is a, a, a back team 
like looking for the technology and that all the admin administrative things is is going as as we all hope so all the people that you see here around <laughs> they all work together to make these things happen and there's a lot of work behind to to make the the class go forward as as expected so uh, as me, as in person student, honestly, I didn't have seen much uh, the setbacks that you mentioned, only during the period that was the quarantine time, when we were like fully uh, at home and we couldn't do anything. But other than that, yeah, you, you cannot like have uh, so much uh, group meetings or that kind of things. But there's always a kind of solution, as Morgan said. We, we as students were able to manage and to handle this situation. And also the school uh, provides uh, tools so we can keep going uh, without being that uh, an issue. And honestly, as far as I know, this is, there, this is not happening in all schools. And this is like a very special case. So that is really like valuable. Great, thank you. Um, another question we have for you here, how challenging, <clears throat> excuse me, how challenging is the dual degree program well, compared to a single degree with uh, regards to time consumed and academic hours? Do you mind talking about this a little bit? Yeah, that's a, it's a great question. And I have to say in advance that I'm, I'm kind of biased because of the COVID situation. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm also have to say that I'm, I'm a mother, so I'm not I'm not a single person here in the U.S. So I also have to uh, I have a, a kid who goes to hybrid system in the school, so it's a dual role that in my personal life is a bit difficult to manage uh, right now with the dual degree because of the timing because I have to handle my home but also my own skills, but. If you don't have a family and kids are going to be back to school very soon. So everything is changing now in the US a lot. Mm -hmm. But uh, I will say that the programs are pretty much similar in terms of um, what you are being expect to deliver. Uh, the main difference is if, if, if the program suits to you. So. An MBA, for example, is a more global master, which uh, goes through several topics in an overall um, scope of view. Uh, the master in business analytics is very more specific. It's a, a STEM program, which is more about coding, programming. So if you are not good in math, for example, yeah, you will have probably not a good time and and will be harder for you but if you are good and you are interested which is the most important part if you like it and and you want to learn yeah program will be more or less similar perfect thank you um all right a two-part question here what kind of opportunities does one get while doing a dual degree in mba and also a master's of business analytics um and also what do you like most about the dual degree program Oh, uh, so the, um, what I do like, and I do have also, there's a lot. So again, I'm from the MBA. Uh, so I have a lot of my teammates from the MBA class. There's a lot of them doing also dual degrees. And there's not only the master in business analytics, there's also one in, for example, in finance or marketing. So you have a different option to go deeper into a topic that you like, that you want to like uh, focus more. My particular case was analytics. But uh, what, I, what I think as uh, I, I focus on that because on my particular case, again, I come from South America where analytics is not so uh, rich um, uh, at this moment. So marketing people, uh, unless you come from the computer science world, there's not much business people who has an analytical background. So I wanted to uh, get that expertise and more learning. 
for thinking on my future if I go back to my country. But the other question that you also asked, uh, Brooke, was about um, what happens after the, mm -hmm. the program. Uh, yeah, okay. Yeah, the dual degree in, in analytics and finance gives you a STEM OPT, uh, and probably enough, or some of you can explain it better than me, but basically means that you can work here in the US for three years in mm -hmm. if you work in, in, in a STEM job. Mm -hmm. And yeah, there's so as far as I have seen with my friends, uh, many of them already have a job here, despite COVID. And again, this is a very special year. So it's not, it will be, it will not be fair to compare to other years. Mm -hmm. But despite COVID, there's a lot of people who already have a job. There's a lot of people applying for job. Mm -hmm. And at the end, a lot depends of what you are looking and what are your own personal goals and what is what you want to write as a path in your life. Um, yeah. Okay, thank you. Um, when you moved to Boston, was it a challenge to find safe, convenient housing on a student budget? Um, and did you get any support in this search? Uh, so as I said, I came here with my family. So in my case, we're three people and I have to find a house for ourselves, which was a bit harder in comparison to a single student because normally what uh, my my friends do here is like they rent a house and they live like five six uh, students all of uh, and they rent all together and they build this community and they have a really good time i i know many of them who has this uh, share apartment also you have halt house which is one block away from the school, which is amazing in the winter because the winter is really hot <laughs> sometimes. So that is, <laughs> you have to consider also the distance. But yeah, to be honest, so Boston is not a cheap city, but uh, you will be able to find something in our, around the range that you will be told. So normally all the staff of HALT will tell you how much approx you will need and you will find something like that. Again, COVID have lowered the price, so you might also find something better for your money. Great, thank you. Um, okay, what are some pitfalls that HALT MBA uh, students run into or what are some challenges that you run into both as an MBA student, but also as a dual degree student? So what, uh, yeah, again, I don't know if I will call it a pitfall, but uh, what you see uh, is that, for example, uh, on the MBA group, the diversity is, I think, is the biggest one, is, is, is the master who has the biggest diversity of all the programs, because there is a lot of people who, who comes without the business background, for example. So, there, you can find doctors, uh, lawyers, and there's a lot of people from other fields. And those people normally uh, have a very hard time at the beginning, like to understand all these business concepts. But the community that the MBA built is so good that uh, we help all to each other. So at the end, yeah, they normally, they don't have the, it's not as easy as someone with a business background, but uh, they they manage and they learn and they have this great time as well. Um, versus, and again, the, the, the question I think is a bit like relative because I don't know with what to compare. Mm -hmm. In my particular case, I decide to do the MBA in the US and not in my country, for example, because uh, I already study on the best university in my country. So it didn't make sense to make an MBA there. Mm -hmm. And I wanted also not only the MBA as a title, but as, as uh, Dean Chavez mentioned, I wanted to have the experience to live in the US and to relate to different cultures and to develop other skills that I will not be able to develop in my country. And again, this, if 
you can find a lot of pitfalls there, but I feel that that is your own responsibility. So you are the one who can control that and you are the one who can manage uh, that point. So great. Thank you. Um, okay, we'll do one more question here and then I am going to open it up to a Q&A for uh, all of our panelists. Mm -hmm. um, were you able to study at a different campus or were you in Boston the whole time? So I was, uh, I have been in Boston all the time because COVID. Uh, there was a moment uh, when before, so in the summer program, you can rotate to the other different uh, schools and actually my plan was to rotate to all of them but COVID happens and everything got closed so I have to change my 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 plan uh, at the end it wasn't that bad so honestly I have had a great time in Boston and really like the city uh, I have more time to know the city which is also cool but yeah, my, my first intention was to rotate to Dubai and London and San Francisco and all the places. <laughs> I'm so sorry you weren't able to see all of the campus. Yeah, but... Hopefully one day, you know, you'll still be able <laughs> yeah. to be there. Um, okay, great. Thank you so much for taking the time to answer those questions. Um, I am going to open it up uh, to all of the panelists here. So feel free to ask any questions that you may have about you know, our career services, clubs that we have, enrollment questions. Um, I do see a number of questions in the chat function here. And I believe Mia, uh, our enrollment advisor has been getting to some of them. Um, but Mia, if you don't mind, would love to go through a couple of these questions with you. Um, first being, should we always wear a mask on campus? Um, if so, what does that look like? You know, do you need to wear a mask in clubs, uh, classes, things like that? Yeah, uh, first off, hi everyone. My name is Mia and I am uh, an associate director of enrollment for our master's programs in uh, I'm working out of Boston, um, but I work with students from all over the place. Um, our programs are the Master's in International Business, Master's in Finance, Master's in Business Analytics, and Master's in International Marketing. So if you have any questions about those, feel free to uh, throw those in the chat. Uh, for your question, Brooke, I would uh, uh, direct that to Morgan because she is the one that's currently on campus. I do believe that masks are required, but I'll let Morgan answer that one and then we can come back to me. Yeah, thanks, Mia. Um, so as you can all see, myself and Soledad are both wearing masks. Um, we, so currently, yes, uh, we are required to wear masks on campus in public spaces. Um, I'm currently in one of our many breakout rooms on campus and I'm still wearing a mask. We are currently following Massachusetts state guidelines. Um, as those change, as those are updated, uh, state and federal guidelines, we adjust our campus policy accordingly. We do take COVID very seriously here. We do have uh, cleanings, deep cleanings of classrooms. There's an hour break in between each class using a room so we can do cleaning. We're currently also doing on-campus testing. So any on-campus student is getting tested once a week. Um, and we do have a very intense uh, COVID tracking protocol on campus. So we are taking this seriously, but a lot of our restrictions and guidelines are based on state and federal guidelines. Great. I hope that answers. Thank you. And you know what, Morgan, I actually do have two follow up questions here for you regarding housing. Um, so the first question being, is it mandatory um, that participants stay at Holt House uh, on campus? And then the other part of the question is, uh, will students have any assistance in finding housing? Yeah, of course. Um, so no, you aren't required to live in Holt House. The only students who are our first year undergraduate students, um, just because it's your first year, we wanna help you build that community. But um, you have the option of living in Holt House, but it is not required. In terms of assistance, um, we have on My Holt, which is the internal page for all admitted and matriculated students. There's a list of information on finding an apartment. Um, there's some local apartment buildings that other students have found useful that are close to campus. Um, so you can find some assistance there as well. Great, thank you. Um, all right, back to Mia. Um, Victor would like to know that if he wants to do one semester in London, does he have to pay extra? 
Uh, so your tuition covers the full year, including your rotation. What you would have to pay for is just your accommodations and cost of living. Um, and so as I answered, I think, uh, I forget who asked in the chat, but uh, the way our program is set up is it's a one year full time program and for your first eight months, uh, that's when you'll be taking your core classes and that's going to be in your home campus, uh, which you get to choose if you're doing an MBA or a master's in international business, but for the more specialized programs we do offer them at certain home campuses, but for that last three months that's when you'll be taking your electives um, and you can choose to rotate to any other campus. Um, that is currently open. And yes, we are doing rotation this year. I am actually currently enrolled in uh, one of our programs here at Holt and I will be rotating to, to Dubai myself. So rotation is currently open. Fantastic, thank you. Um, and Norma would like to know if next semester you can also take online classes if the limitless learning will continue post COVID. Uh, it should be, uh, available right now because I don't think we are in a post COVID situation. Unfortunately, we are getting there, but uh, you know, we are still offering that for students who do not feel safe or are not able to uh, come in person right now. So yes, that is still an option. And uh, Brooke, I do want to uh, quickly uh, kind of piggyback on what Morgan was saying about housing. I know Weston had asked in the chat uh, about what we do to kind of help students with that. And I did answer that in the Q&A, but I do want to repeat it for everyone to hear. Uh, when you are accepted at HALT and you put down your deposit, there is going to be um, a tab called accommodations on your portal that gives you recommendations based on the campus you are going to uh, of where you can live, neighborhoods or places you can check for that. Uh, we also make sure to connect all of our students who are accepted. Let's say if you're accepted into the Boston campus, we make sure to connect all students coming to Boston in the fall. That way, if you are looking for roommates, there's going to be other students looking for roommates and all of you guys can find housing together. Um, and then your enrollment advisors are also going to be uh, a great resource for recommendations in, where, uh, in which you know they can tell you different neighborhoods, different websites to look at and so on and so forth. Great, thank you. Um, Daniel would like to know what type of scholarship opportunities are available? Yeah, so uh, for our master's programs, we do have six different scholarships. Um, they vary from a social impact, women in business, academic excellence. You can apply to up to two of them. Um, and that's open to all students from all around the world. And we also have financial aid available for students to apply for. Now, we are a business school that operates like a business, meaning we have more funding available earlier in the year rather than later in the year. So if funding is something that is important to you, I strongly recommend um, applying at your earliest if you are looking into uh, fall of 2021. Great, thank you. Um, it looks like there are a couple questions for NAV. Um, actually, Mia, this one may be more geared towards you. Is it possible to do the specialized masters on campus, but part-time? Um, they're working remotely currently and was wondering if they can stay on while managing academic workload and hours. So by specialized masters, I'm thinking uh, they're talking about a master's in finance or business analytics or international marketing. Uh, those programs are full-time programs. They're one year full-time and because they have been condensed into one year, they are pretty demanding. Uh, we do not recommend that students have a part-time job, um, especially if it is something that's going to require, you know, a lot of your attention. What I do recommend for students or suggest for students who do want um, a part-time job just to kind of help with uh, pocket money is uh, going into your program for the first two or three months without a job and seeing how that workload is on you. And if you feel like you do have that extra time and you are able to handle a secondary, not very demanding job, then go for it. But it is one year and we do ask that you kind of commit to the program so that you can get the most out of it in and out of the classroom. Great, thank you. Um, okay, this next question is for Nav. Nav, could you give an idea about jobs after pursuing a master's in international business? Um, they say, now I know that this is not a STEM degree, but would you be able to recommend any tips or skills that would increase the possibility of getting a job in the US? Yeah, I think, um, and Soledad could probably agree with this, but um, regardless of the, the occupation, the role that you're in, um, data literacy and you know the ability to um, interpret data 
uh, you would, don't have to be a hardcore coder <laughs> is always is always integral, particularly because a lot of decisions in business are made um, using using data. So to be able to to uh, to interpret it, draw insights from it um, is, is is critical. So I you know I would recommend um, you know everybody thinking about about that, increasing your data literacy capacity. You're going to do that no doubt anyway through um, through curriculum. Uh, through internship, if you decide to, you know, take an internship that uh, provides you with exposure to that. Uh, but I, I, I would highly suggest that because we're seeing more and more of that these days. When we look at kind of where are the student outcomes, where, where students are employed and the types of roles they're employed in, um, more and more increasingly every year um, are in roles where there's heavy use of, um, you know, of data in terms of analysis or um, uh, using it to make, make decisions. And it doesn't necessarily mean everyone has to go off and do the dual degree in, in the MSBA. Um, you know, uh, it just depends on the the, the role that uh, that is for you and, and, and what that entails. Um, in terms of where do MIB, the Master of International students, uh, go off and work to? I think in the last four or five years, it's been pretty consistent. Um, you know, marketing is is a big bucket. Um, marketing is a is a big bucket for our um, MIB students. You know, particularly if you're early career and you, you don't have a lot of uh, specialized experience behind you. Um, often, uh, you know, business development, sales, and marketing is is a is a big one. Uh, we're seeing a lot go into uh, into analyst roles. So um, the business analyst tends to be one that comes up a lot. Um, uh, financial analyst, if it's an MIB who's going on to do a dual degree in, in MFIN, or if it's an MFIN uh, in the standalone program, those tend to be the um, uh, tend to be the types of occupations that are ranked in the in the top five. Um, there are some that that go off into um, into consulting. May not be with consulting firms, but it could be uh, business consulting within you know a, a corporation. Um, but those are the types of roles. And what I would encourage you to do is, if you go to halt.edu um, and you go to the program that you're interested in, there is a careers brochure that will uh, give you insights into kind of what the class of um, uh, this would be the class of 2019, which is the most recent data. You know where where they ended up in terms of top five uh, industries, top five roles. Um, you'll get all that information there for the program that you're you're interested in. Perfect. Thank you, Nath. Um, okay, Mia, back to you. Um, the question is, what are the admissions requirements? Uh, do they need to take the GRE, the GMAT? Yep, that's a great question. And I was actually jotting down some questions that I was looking at so that I can cover those as well. Uh, but for requirements for our master's program, um, we do our application in two different stages. The first one is the preliminary application. And for that, you uh, go on holt.edu, click apply, and it's going to prompt you to build a profile. Think of it as a LinkedIn profile. And all you'll need to put in is your personal information, your education, and the application fee, which is $75. So once you do this first step, you become an active applicant and you will be connected with your enrollment advisor and your application manager. Your application manager is gonna be the person who's going to help you with those supporting documents, which include your resume, your essay, your transcript. Uh, they're gonna book an interview for you, work on the reference with you um, and all those things. In regards to entrance exams, um, for the master's in international business, we do not uh, for the Masters in International Business and International Marketing, we do not require a GMAT or a GRE. Uh, for Business Analytics, if you do have the background in Business Analytics, we do not require that, and same for Finance. Um, but if you come for from a uh, completely different background and you are committed to Business Analytics, uh, GMAT might be required. Uh, again, this is something that our admissions committee will confirm, but you can apply before you have it. So don't let that stop you from applying. Quick follow-up, is a reference mandatory? We do need a reference's information. We don't ask for a letter, just their information and we do we reach out to them. Okay, um, and do you know what the last deadline is for a uh, dual degree for international students that are looking for scholarships? So we do have a deadline coming up next week on the 25th. Um, you are looking for Again, funding, um, scholarships for dual degree or anything of this sort, I strongly recommend activating your application. This is a step that shouldn't take you longer than 10 minutes, um, but doing so will uh, kind of position you well for uh, bigger packages and funding if that's something you're looking for. Of course, it also depends on your application, but um, I recommend not waiting until the 25th to apply. I know that's human nature and we always wait till the last day, but uh, just send in those applications and we will work with you on next step. Great, thank you. Um, and then Julia would like to know if you need to take an entrance exam when coming to Holt. 
Uh, so entrance exams vary based where a student is coming from. Uh, we don't really require um, entrance exams, but uh, for example, English tests, if, if, that, if you want to put that under um, entrance exam, if you uh, studied your undergrad in English or have worked in the US uh, after getting your undergrad for two years or more, you do not need a TOEFL or an IELTS. Uh, but if you did do your undergrad in a different language, that is something that might be required. Again, it is not required uh, before you apply. So you can always apply and then check in with us and be like, what do, we, what do I need? And then we will uh, let you know if you do need any entrance exams. Great, thank you. Um, this next question is for Soledad. Um, we are gonna take just a few more questions here because I wanna be conscious of um, timing. But if we didn't get to your question, then of course you can reach out to your enrollment advisor um, or email admissions at halt.edu. I'll put that in the chat in just a minute here. Um, okay, Soledad, in terms of workload, what does a typical week look like with classes and homework? So as, uh... I think Mia mentioned that these are full-time program. So you have to take that into consideration when they say full-time is that they're full-time. So you, you will be either on class or either working or studying out of class. So normally you will have like, I don't know, an AM, APM schedule full with between assignments or classes or something like that. Don't think that because you only have, normally you have like one or two classes per day maximum, but it doesn't mean that you have the rest of the day off. You will be uh, expect to be working on themes or assignments or readings or something like that. So uh, that will be. Great, thank you. Um, this is another good question for you, Soledad. Um, as you are an MSBA student too, what courses would you recommend to study from um, ahead of time? So websites like uh, Coursera uh, to be more prepared for the September 2021 MSBA program. I'm asking because I don't have knowledge in business analytics. And that is a wonderful question because I will love to have that information before doing the, the program as well. I didn't have, I, I don't have a, a computer science background or something like that. And something that you will need to know, uh, hopefully in advance, is to know Python. So if you can at least know the foundation, it's not, you don't need to be a master or something like that, but to understand the concept, the, the basic of the code, that will be great. So Python and R, those two programs, uh, I will strongly recommend you to analyze. And in general, everything related to data analytics, like regressions or that kind of concept, that will be cool. But in terms of programs, if you never work with, on Python or R, I totally recommend those two. Would you ever mind just putting those in the chat function for people? Sure. That would be great. Um, okay, again, just want to keep an eye on the time here. So we'll probably just take one more question. Um, this one is for you, Mia. Can you apply for a secondary scholarship if you've already been granted one? Uh, if you applied for one, if you have written one essay only and you would like to write a second one, that is definitely something you can speak to your enrollment advisor uh, about, but we do only allow students to apply for two scholarships and then financial aid. Great, thank you so much. Okay, fantastic. Um, it looks like we do have a few more questions here. Again, if you guys don't mind just emailing admissions at halt.edu, I put it in the chat function. We can make sure um, to get to everyone. Uh, last question here for you, Mia. Do you know what the application deadline is for specialized master's programs for international students? Um, they would be starting in September, 2022. Uh, so September 2022, they have a little bit of time, but we do start enrollment for the following years um, as early as now. So if you are interested um, in tackling your application and not worrying about it, we do have a future team that will walk with you throughout the process. Um, so you can choose to do that now. Otherwise, uh, you can wait until September and do so. So it's completely up to you and your timeline. All right, fantastic. 
Well, thank you so much, everyone, for joining. We are really excited to hopefully have a lot of you on our Boston campus soon. Um, if you have any questions, please reach out to your enrollment advisor or email admissions at pulp.edu. Um, thank you so much for your participation. And thank you, thank you so much to all of our panelists. Um, it was really helpful hearing everything that you had to say. And I'm sure the attendees um, definitely got a lot from it. So thank you all so much. And I hope you have a great day. Bye, everyone.